Project 2 deals with the lower of cost or market issue. Now this relates to accounting for our inventory. So let's review this accounting topic first. The general rule is that we record assets and what we paid for them at their historical cost, although sometimes it's appropriate to show inventory at an amount less than what it originally cost us. That would be the case if our inventory has gone down in value. It no longer is worth what we paid for it, and it would be misleading to leave it on, to leave it on our books then for its original cost. Now understand that this is something that we're going to do not every day or not every week, or, but only when we go to prepare our financial statements. At the end of the accounting period, we'll need to check and determine whether the inventory has gone down in value. If our inventory has declined in value, then something bad has happened. We call that a loss, and we need to go in and make an entry to record that loss right now. Now, the way this process takes place is that at the end of the accounting period, you know how many units of each item you have on hand, and you know what those items cost you because you've already used LIFO, FIFO, or whatever method to determine the amount of your inventory's cost. We'll then compare the inventory's cost to what we call market. By market, we mean replacement value. If I were to go out there now and today buy that same inventory item again, how much would I pay for it? That's the market value. If our market value is less than cost, again, something bad has happened, and we need to record that now. We have incurred a loss, and we need to record that right away. The reason we do this is we have a concept in accounting called conservatism, and conservatism says we don't want to make our company look too good. That does not mean we want to make our company look bad. It means simply that we want to be very cautious not to overstate our assets or to overstate our income. Because if we were to do so, that would be misleading to people looking at our financial statements. For example, if they looked at our financial statements and our income was overstated or our assets were overstated, they might be tempted to invest in our company, whereas if they actually knew the truth, then they would not want to do so. So we don't want to mislead people looking at our financial statements. How does the lower cost or market work? Well, at the end of the period, you already know which each item in inventory cost you. You next need to, de to determine its market value, in other words, the replacement uh, cost. If you had to go out and buy that item again today, what would you pay for it? Then we are going to value the inventory at its lower of cost or market. Now there are three ways that we can apply this. We can do it item by item, which means that we look at each item in inventory and select the lower of that item's cost or market. We can do it category by category, which means that for each category of um, inventory items, we will select the lower of cost or market. Or we could do it as inventory in total. That's a topic we're not going to cover. We'll only go through item by item and, and category by category. If we come up with a valuation that is less than what the inventory cost us, something bad has occurred, and we're going to make a journal entry to record that. The journal entry will be made for the difference between what the inventory cost us and the amount we have decided to value it at using the lower of cost or market. My journal entry is a credit to merchandise inventory to make that asset go down. We're going to be writing it down from its cost so that the balance in the merchandise inventory account then will reflect the amount we have determined to be the lower of cost or market. The debit for that entry is going to go to an account called loss due to decline in market value. Losses are like expenses. They're recorded with a debit. They are subtracted on the income statement. They make my net income go down. So when you see the word loss, I want you to think expense. What if all of our items in inventory have gone up in value? They haven't gone down. They have gone up. Well, that's a great thing. We're very happy, and we will not make a journal entry at all to record that. So in other words, we're going to write our inventory down, but we can never write our inventory up. Let's go to an example. Here we have garden supplies and tools. Within my garden supplies, I have hoses, sprinklers, and rakes. Within my tools, I have hammers and saws. This first column here gives me the quantity of each item I have on hand. The next column tells me how much each item costs me. And the next one tells me the market value of each item. The first thing we need to do is to multiply. Okay, for my hoses, we need to determine their total cost. Well, if I have 40 hoses and each one costs me $20, then the total cost of my hoses will be $800. The total market value of my hoses would be 40 of them times $21 each. 
says my total market value then is 840. Let's go on and do it for the sprinklers. We have 10 of them, cost me $9 each, so the total cost of my sprinklers then is $90. The total market value would be 10 of them at $12 each. The total market then would be $120. For the rakes, we have 20 of them, cost me $6 each. The total cost of my rakes then is $120. 20 rakes with a market value of $5 each says the total market value then is $100. We'll stop there and figure a subtotal for my garden supplies. I'm going to add up for the cost, the $800 plus the $90 plus the $120, says that the total cost of my garden supplies is $1,010, and the total market value of my garden supplies would be the $840 plus the $120 plus $100, and so that's a total then of $1,060. Let's continue on to the hammers. Nine of them costing me $7 each, says that the total cost of my hammers is $63. Nine of them with a market value of $6 each says that the total market value then is $54. 20 saws cost me $15 each. Total cost then would be $300. And 20 saws with a market value of $12 each says the total market then would be $240. For, for my tools, my total cost is going to be the 63 plus the 300 or $363. For my tools, the total market value would be $54 plus 240 is a total of 294. The total cost of my inventory is the 1010 for my garden supplies and the 363 for my tools. If I add those together, I have $1,373 is the total cost of my inventory. Notice I put not needed for the total market value because we're not going to be doing anything with that figure. Now it's time to apply the lower of cost or market. For my hoses, the cost is 800, the market is 840. The lower of those two is the cost, so I'll value my hoses then at $800. For the sprinklers, cost is 90, market is 120, so I'll value my sprinklers then at $90 each. For the rakes, 120 or 100. Well, my market is lower here. I'm going to value my rakes then at $100. For the hammers, $63 cost, $54 market. The market is lower. I'll value them at $54. And finally, for my saws, 300 cost, 240 market. The market is lower. I'll value my saws then at $240. Using the item by item method, we're going to add up each item in this column. We're going to add up the 800, the 90, 100, 54, and 240 says that we're going to value our inventory using lower of cost or market, $284. So at what amount should we value the inventory? $1,284. How much of a loss should we record? The inventory is in my books for $1,373. We've just decided to report it at $1,284, so we need to make inventory go down then by $89. My journal entry would be a debit to loss due to decline in market value of $89, and my credit will go to merchandise inventory for $89 also. What if instead we had used the category by category approach? Well, now we're going to look at our two totals here the cost of 1010 and the market of 1060 the lower of those two is the 1010 so we're going to value our inventory then at $1010 for the garden supplies for the tools i need to value them at the lower of their cost or market so it's 363 versus 294 in this case the market is lower i'll value value it at $294 hello the total amount at which I'll report my inventory, if I do it category by category, then would be the 1010 plus the 294, says that I'll show it then at a total of $1,304. So let's suppose we had decided instead to use the category by category method. At what amount will we record my inventory? Well, at $1,304. How much of a loss should we record? Well, the inventory is on my books for its cost. We have just decided that we need to record it at $1,304. Therefore, we need to make my inventory go down by $69 in this case. So notice we end up with a higher inventory value than had we done it item by item. We end up with a lower amount of a loss. 
My journal entry would again be a loss due to decline in market value for $69. And my credit goes to merchandise inventory for $69. Once I post that entry to the merchandise inventory account, you'll see that my inventory is no longer recorded at its cost of $1,393, but is now recorded at the amount we calculated the lower of cost or market to be $1,304 instead.